Hello, St. Patrick's and Brewer. Happy Epiphany Tide to all of you. On Friday, Father Cross and I connected via Zoom, and he shared some of the amazing awesomeness that you have been up to in the last couple of months. You are embracing some brave change, and you are preparing right now to listen to neighbors in and around Brewer about how to be the church for this moment. It will no longer suffice for congregations to gather for worship only in our lovely buildings. God's mission is leading us to engage people who aren't part of our churches and ask something like, in your mind, what's the greatest need? Or to say, we're part of St. Patrick's Church in Brewer, and we'd like to hear from you about what you think a church should be doing to be a better neighbor. <laughs> we are listening. One of the things that I learned from Rick is that your church building is going to need a lot of attention and money. You're not alone in this challenge. Many of our congregations throughout the Diocese of Maine are wondering how to fund the rising expense of maintaining and improving our physical properties. It's not that buildings are irrelevant or that we don't need them but our capacity to keep them as dedicated space for a few hours each week is diminishing. And this reality is opening our eyes and our hearts to becoming better stewards. What if you were to share your building with other faith communities or organizations? What if you were to transform the building so that it was both a resource for the wider community and for yourself and wasn't a financial burden to you? What if you were to move and to share space elsewhere? These are good questions, and there aren't any easy answers. But please trust God and each other so that you can keep having the conversation. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And as you listen for the Spirit of God and to your neighbors and to ecumenical partners, you're also listening to each other. This was so clear as Rick told me about it. This is beautiful. Please continue to speak and listen so that your bonds of affection and respect with each other grow yet stronger. If you're feeling scared, I bet there are others who feel similarly, so say it out loud. And if you're feeling excited, say that too. Whatever your truth is might well resonate among others and when that happens, we discover the precious grace that in Jesus Christ, we are always being made new and that we're not alone. Your discovery team has identified four directions where you might put some energy and time, families and family issues and concerns, food insecurity and addressing hunger, homelessness and addressing the need for affordable housing mental illness, and addressing the need for care, support, and treatment. You know something? Our Lord concerned himself with these matters too. Throughout the Gospels, we read about how Jesus cared for those who were vulnerable and how he challenged those who were powerful to envisage and then to build a new kingdom where equity and mercy would be the guiding principles for how to live. I'm so proud of you, St. Patrick's, and make no mistake, other congregations are going to learn from you too. Thank you for leading and for listening and for loving. In the letter to the Hebrews, in the beginning of the 12th chapter, we read, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking only unto Jesus, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Friends, nothing else matters than focusing on him. Jesus has already shown us how to live, and in his death and rising again, he's shown us how to trust that what is now is not what shall always be. Listen to him, friends. He is a pioneer, and he's already done it, and he will give you what you need for the work that is before you. God keeps you, St. Patrick's, and the best is yet to come. I can't wait to see you and hear all the ways in which you are responding to this call. Much love and all of my prayers to all of you. Mm -hmm.